Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to say happy Sabbath. Um, and in, in, in Hebrew, Sabbat Shalom. Um, and, and Sabbat Shalom is actually gone very deep into saying, I wish you all God's blessing and I wish you the best and peace that God could give to you. Uh, and so it's, it's wonderful to be here this morning. I'd like to thank your church. I'd like to thank your pastors for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. Actually, Pastor Grant was supposed to speak. But he said, Dad, I've got an appointment with the leadership group, so can you take the service? Uh, I said, you've got to pass it through Neil Thompson, and you've got to pass it through Russell Stanley before you can get to me. Uh, so, but yeah, it's so good. I, I've been here a while. Uh, I've made a commitment uh, at the beginning of this year, and it was fitting that I have to speak based upon the book that Neil wants to, sh to share with you guys. I hope you guys don't mind me up here. Is that Okay. I'm too short. I'm shorter than Grant, so I can't really go down there. So, um, but um, it's it's regarding fueling warm relationship, and um, and it's because I made that commitment this year. I go to Lakeside Church. Um, I work a lot alongside uh, Dr. Andy Mathis and uh, and David Price, and then Peter Peter Watts before that, and yeah. So I, I go to Lakeside Church. My membership is there. But when Tiamina came into my world. Um, and then she chose to church here at Forrester Beach. I decided to come here unofficially. So I haven't asked Elva Nixon to actually transfer my membership here. But uh, yeah, I'll get to it when I, when I get to it. Uh, but it's good to be here. And uh, so grateful, the warm welcome from each and every one of you. My fiance is here, Rachel. There'll be two Rachels in the family. Grant's wife is Rachel. My uh, future wife in October will be another Rachel. So I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do that, but it's so grateful. I, I, I recognize some of, uh, of you that I know from Kurumbong. I moved here in 2004 with Grant when he was about six foot two, um, and they went to Avondale School, and I moved here to do my Bachelor of Theology and Ministry at Avondale. Uh, because I didn't, there was no room for us in Papua New Guinea. So I study, I study Diploma of Theology at Fulton College. Uh, it's a long story, but I'm uh, yeah, grateful that I'm standing in front of you worshipping God. Uh, that song still got me. I, I was teary when I was singing that song because I used to lead out in our worship at church in Lakeside. That means if I move here, I don't have to do the worship. I just sit down and, and enjoy Sabbath with each and every one of you. But I was leading out uh, with some of the great uh, musicians in Lakeside. Uh, still, I remember when it came out, just not long ago, the big tsunami happened. You know, the big tsunami that affected all of Asia. Um, and there was a story that came out of there by the division that was sent out on the record. I don't know whether you've read it. But there was a story of two young ladies that were actually caught in this tsunami. And they were floating and they were fighting for their life. And there were debris all over around them. There were two Filipino young ladies. And they held on to each other. And they sang this song. They survived to tell their story. And that's why it gets me when, because sometimes life can be difficult. And sometimes life can be cool. Sometimes life can be warm. Sometimes life can be cold. But at the end of the day, we all go through difficulties, and those difficulties, this song brings tears to my eyes because we bring through a lot. And I wish my son was here this morning. I know his dear wife is here with my granddaughter, Tiamina, Tiamina and Paw Paw, uh, Rachel's grandmother. It's good to have you. I know she goes to Orimba Church, but she came to listen. I'm not that flamboyant preacher. I run around on the surface, and uh, yeah, that's right. But I, just, I just preach the word of the Lord. I graduated in 2007. I pastored in this conference under John Lang, and I was the assistant pastor to Wilf Pascal at the Samoan Church at Broadmeadow, who's now become Bororu Samoan Church, which is the Newcastle Samoan Church today, uh, and also help him out with Dora Creek Church. Then I got called to Carol Lundy Aboriginal Centre to be their chaplain, and was there for a few for a while. And it was a strain in our relationship. That's when I was starting to date Rachel. Uh, she lives in her own house, I live in my own house, okay, just, just to make that clear, all right, um, uh, so she lives in Bonos Bay, I live in Kurumbong then, uh, she still lives in Bonos Bay, but I'm now moved to Morissette, closer, Morissette Park, closer, so, so, yeah, so I live there now, 
But uh, yeah, it's, it's good. The journey in ministry has been tough. Uh, it hasn't been uh, that glory of a journey. But I thank God for Grant because I always call him the kid that changed my life. Um, and so before I continue, I want to sing a song. Is that okay? I'm not a good singer. Grant is a better singer than me. But I'll do my best. I forgot my stand. When I got there, the young gentleman at the back, uh, I said, do you guys got a spare one in your... It reminds me of uh, Pastor Laurie Evans. A story was told by Pastor Sam of Masanga when he was the president of Samoa and Pastor Laurie Evans um, came to Samoa. And um, you know, us Samoan people are very conservative with church. So if you think I'm overdressed, I apologize. But it's my dedication to serve the Lord. Uh, I used to be in business in New Zealand and I used to dress up to be in management meetings and all that. Um, but I, I made a choice when I came back to God at, the, at a very, uh, yeah, at, at a life that was uh, trouble. So I hope you don't mind. I'm going to sing this song. Um, I wrote it not long ago. Um, so if I get it wrong, I, I hope you don't mind. Blame Grant for all the things I do wrong up here. Good morning to those who are online, and I apologize I say those stuff. Oh, what love so divine Left his splendor and his mind Came to earth for the sake of humankind He knew the cost that he will pay On the cross that bears my name His perfect sacrifice Was offered on that day Many people gathered by Some were happy, some were crying As the Son of God bled there and died Many hope have fade away, but to God the greatest victory was made. I stand today because of His amazing grace. have filled her eyes as she knelt there and cried knowing this will be the end of her son's life forgetting who he really is the great I am the Prince of Peace eternal life for us was purchased on Calvary Many people gathered by Some were happy, some were crying As the Son of God bled there and died Many hope have fade away but to God the greatest victory was made I stand today because of His amazing grace I stand today because of His amazing Father, I humbly before you come. Father, use this broken vessel that was sealed and mended by your blood to share your word to your beautiful sons and daughters, friends and brothers and sisters. I pray, Father, Lord, that you speak through me. Let them hear you, Father. Let your spirit move into their hearts as they hear, Lord, what you have shared in my heart to share with them. 
Thank you so much for being with us. My humble prayer. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen. The beginning of the week, I got a phone call from Singleton Church pastor. He says, Pastor Rob, are you free? I said, no, I'm engaged. <laughs> she said, oh, try, don't try to be funny. She was, she was a student at Avondale College, and she was at our church. She was a ministerial student at our church at Lakeside. And I remember the first time when Letitia arrived at uh, Lakeside Church, I was running what you call a lending library. So we would buy uh, DVDs and video and VHS. Uh, sorry, kids, so we're going a little bit back to my era. Not Grant's era, my era. Um, and we used to go out to Bonnells Bay and around all uh, around Morrison. We used to knock on doors, cold calling. Uh, and I used to give them uh, DVDs for free. And when the, the series came out uh, of our evangelism campaign from the, conf- uh, from the division, we had lent them out. And some people take it, they watch it. No cost, nothing. I don't tell them anything about Jesus. I just give them the DVD, you watch it. I'll come back next week and give you the second one. And that's what we used to do. And Letitia was part of that team. Remember, we used to go and visit the, the hospital in, uh, in John Hunter, and it was funny. It was funny. I have a photo, and I wish I would put together. Maybe next time, if God permits, and your church permits, and I'll be here again, I'll put together a PowerPoint of how we, we lined up. There was about seven of us, and I was right in the front. I didn't know. They, they, were, they were funny, these young people at Lakeside Church. Um, now they're pastoring. There are about three of them who are graduated who are now pastoring in churches. Uh, some in our conference and some over, uh, over in Queensland. But yeah, Letitia rang me. She goes, are you free? I said, no, I'm engaged. She goes, I know that, but are you free to take a service for me? I said, why? Oh, because one of the old pa- oh, so, sorry, sorry well, my apologies. One of the pastors <laughs> wasn't free. Sorry, my apologies. I apologize. One of the pastors wasn't free to take the service. I said, oh, okay, so I'll, I'll fill it in. I'll, I'll, I'll be the, the, what you call it, the spear. You know, I, I used to play rugby, you know, rugby union, real rugby. All right, so I apologize for those who follow our NRL, but uh, I know my son does. Uh, I remember when they came to me in 2008 and said, Dad, we want to play rugby. I said, well, you better find me a rugby game that plays on Sunday because you're not allowed to play rugby as long as I live on Sabbath. I apologize, I'm an islander and I grew up in an island conservative world. You know what Grant said to me? But dad, didn't you play rugby on Sabbath? I was silent. I was silent. Um, They did, they found a Central Coast uh, competition, but it was a league competition. So they came to me and they said, dad, we're playing rugby, if you don't mind, but it's rugby league. I said, well, as long as you guys stay fit, that's fine. As long as you stay away from the Sabbath, that's fine. Um, they made it to the very high, I don't know whether you told your story, but he, they made it to the very high accolade of rugby league. Charlie got signed up with the new, uh, Newcastle Knights NYC. Uh, at that time, he was probably one of the fastest kids in the Central Coast and Lake Macquarie. He ran the 100 meters at 10.6 from Avondale School. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I... I could only say, see you, Charlie. I, I couldn't catch him, actually. But if he could turn back the page, I might have to ankle tap him. So I don't know. But um, yeah, so the funny thing about it is that raising two boys and one girl was cool. was cool because the boys would teach me what I need to be as a father, as a single dad in Kurumbong. Um, as I said, Ministry has been tough. I lost my marriage in ministry, my first marriage in ministry to Grant's mom. And, and it was cool. It was cool because then I had three kids to raise. Two were boys and one was a girl. Oh, my poor daughter. I remember Rachel's mom when I first met Rachel and I chat with her mom. Uh, her mom said to me, oh, did Josephine had a life? I said, yeah, she did. And no boys was near her at all. But it was cool. It was cool raising these kids at Kurumbong. They were 15, 14, and a 12-year-old. 
and, and, and they went to Avondale School, and it was tough. It was tough. I have to pay for my fees at Avondale College to finish my bachelor degree uh, f from my diploma in Fulton College. And, it, you know, it was, it was tough. I have to work at sanitarium uh, at night uh, from 3 o'clock until 11 at night. And then I have to fit in my studies in between and then get to class at 8 o'clock in the morning. That was, was fun. I mean, my journey, compared to some of you who are here this morning, my journey is nothing. But it was cool to know that the kid that changed my life ended up being a pastor at your church. Wow. He's not going to like me by saying this. And for those online, yeah, you can rub it on his face when you see him. He always says, Dad, that's what you say. I say, yeah. I was um, 12 when I was an orphan. I lost both mum and dad when I was 12 years old. Um, and part of that song that I wrote, um, Oh, what love so divine. He left his splendor and his might. And when I think about it when I was writing that song, I say, Man, who am I? Who am I that the, the most powerful being in the multiverse now, you have, you, you've heard of that statement before. I mean, we always thought about the universe, but there's a lot of universe out there according to scientists. So I use the word multiverse. The most powerful being in all the multiverse left the splendor and the glory of his, of his might, and he came down for me, for you. How cool is that? How cool is that? As somebody said to me, oh, you know, Rob, your Christianity is a bit iffy. I said, my God is not iffy. My God is a powerful God. I play golf. Who plays golf here? Oh, okay, cool. It's only a few of us. I don't have a handicap. Um, when I hit the ball over 300 meters, they asked me, what's your handicap? I said, I've got nothing. Why, you hit the ball over 300 meters? I said, that's a fluke, I'm a fluke artist. <laughs> I hit the ball over 300 meters. I don't know how I do it. I'm over 50. I can't tell you the exact age that I have, but uh, I, I'm over 50. I'm close to that the other serial number on the other side with a different uh, upside down letter. Um, but I'm getting there. But I play golf. And every time I play golf, I imagine all my issues on that golf ball and I hit the ball. That's what I say to some of these golf guys. I say, that's why I hit it so far because. I see all the stress that I have during the week and all the... No, no, I, well, I was going to say, I was going to say people, but I'm, no, no, I'm not going to pull back on that. Uh, all the issues that I have, and I put it on that golf ball and I hit it. It doesn't matter where it goes. Sometimes it slides and I have to go, for Christmas, Rachel bought, bought me this shirt with her brother. I play golf with her brother. And my Rachel, not Grant's Rachel, my Rachel. Um, she's sitting here this morning. She's going to have a go at me when we go back home. Um, but she bought me this T-shirt. I should have worn it this morning. And at the back of it, what does it say, babe? The king of the, the... Yeah, the captain of the four team. All right? So we joined this social club uh, for, with the RSL in Toronto. And there was this gentleman that's in our club. This is our team. We're playing on a competition, so the foursome. Uh, uh, and they were way, way in the front. And I said to the boys, I think they're in my range. And the boys goes, ah, oh, no, you won't get there, Rob. You won't get there. So I took my three wood out and I whacked it and landed on their cart. <laughs> oh, they went off. I mingle with people who have some very flowery language in the world today. <laughs> At 12, I was an orphan. I lost my dad when I was 10. He was a preacher. I'm the youngest out of 16. I don't know whether Grant mentioned that to you. I'm the baby of 16 kids. Big families. No TV, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but there's only two of us out of 16. Well, two has passed away. But only two of us who are not in the Seventh-day Adventist belief today. Everybody is still in a Seventh-day Adventist belief today. I got a brother who was notorious. I got two brothers, actually. Two of them couldn't come to my graduation at Avondale because their criminal records, the Australian government wouldn't allow them to come in. 
One of them lives in Alaska. Can you believe that? He's got a green card and he lives in America. And he can't fly because the Australian government said, no, 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 no. And the other one lives in New Zealand. So as we were preparing for our wedding this year, I said to myself, should I invite James? This is the one in New Zealand. No, I don't think so I should invite him because he might not be able to jump on the plane and come over here. If he missed my graduation, if he missed my son's wedding, if he missed their 21st birthday, I'm sure he's going to miss my wedding too. But um, I grew up from a very dysfunctional family, very tough family, very hard family. Was it warm? When mum and dad was alive, yes, it was warm. The relationship within our family was tight. Dad was always say, respect the oldest, and the oldest love the youngest. Well, when they passed away, they actually went for me. Because I was the one that was hiding behind mum and dad every day when they were alive. When we were sitting on our dining table that dad built was a massive one. See, dad used to sit on the head of the table, and mum used to sit at the end of the table. Well, when I came into this world and I grew up and got a bit, you know, can walk and do all the things, I sit at the end of the table, took mum's place, and mum sit next to dad. And so my brothers and sisters would go furious with me. How could he? And so every time mum and dad have something, they will feed it to me. You know how you feed your, you spoil your kids sometimes? The favorite one that you have? No, we, we, we don't have favoritism here in this church. But mum used to, you know, slide me some, some this and that. Family was warm, family was fun, family was cool. The relationship within our family was, there was a lot of respect. As an island community, you have to respect each other. You have to care for each other. You have to support each other. Then mum and dad passed away. I was left as a 12-year-old in the street of South Auckland. Well, I wasn't left out in the street, but you know, just a rhetorical way of saying it. And I grew up thinking, wow, what a world is going to be. I had, nine, I had eight brothers, sorry. There's nine, nine of me, and then I got seven sisters. And the tallest out of my sisters is six foot three, and she passed away. How I grew up in the church was absolutely awesome. Born into the Seventh-day Adventist, staunch Seventh-day Adventist, that's why you see me wearing the tie today. Because I dedicated my life back to God. At the age of 13... I was actually more like a street kid on the, on the road. I was hanging out with kids who were playing heavy metal songs. I lost my way in church. My aunties and my uncles and my sisters and my brothers were trying to pray for me. They were yelling at me. And the more they yell, the more I see, see you later. I wasn't coming near you guys if you yell at me. Was the atmosphere warm at church? Yes. Was it cool? Yes. Warm is the new cool. Wow. How can it be? How can warm be at a new cool? How can you mix the two together and make cool become warm and warm become cool? And I remember growing up in the street of South Auckland, you have to be cool to be cool. Seriously, if you're a New Zealander and understand where I'm from, I'm from Mangere, Mangri, which is when you get off the aeroplane, that's my area. We defend the airport, we defend the cemetery, we defend the mountains that's not even high enough to climb. It reminds me of a mountain. I went to Carolina my first Sabbath there. The CEO said to me, uh, Pastor Rob, we're going up to the mountain with the kids. So we went. We went, push driving and go through, and I was on the cot bike. And we got to this little hill. It's not as high as the windows of this church. Stop there and David said to me, Rob, that's Mount Albert. I said, David, you're serious. You're telling me that's a mountain. Yeah, Rob, I know you come from New Zealand. There's high mountains in New Zealand, but that is Mount Albert. I said, okay, all right. That's fine. It's cool. I love serving with the Aboriginal people. For the first time in my life, I told Rachel and my family, it was the first time in my life I was called a white man. Excuse my language, if anybody's offended by that. The, some girls fight in the Central Park, and one of the girls was hidden inside my room, the chaplain's room. I didn't know anything about it. I got a radio, Pastor, can you come to the Central Park? I turned up, and there was commotions. 
People were saying their beautiful words, singing out their beautiful words to each other. And I came, there was a bit of calm, and then they said, oh, the mob from uh, Jigolong and Wiluna are coming. And uh, they're going to, uh, yeah. And so while we're sitting now calmly, they surrounded us with their grow bars and everything. Uh, it was funny. Uh, I, thought, I thought this would be the day. I came to the desert experience of my life, and I'm about to go over with it. And then this guy was like a leader of it, pointing his finger to everyone, and then he pointed to me and said, you two white men. I thought, ooh. Internally, I said, ooh, thank you. Thank you. Call me a white fella. But you know, they became a beautiful community. Why? Because this is what we did. I shared with the, with the church at Carolundi, um, Pastor Vaughan actually started back Carolundi again, the legendary Pastor Vaughan, the late Pastor Vaughan who passed away. Um, but he left footprints in the West. And everywhere you go in the West, especially up in the Bilbro region, up as far as, as, um, as the Kimberley, you'll find the footprints of the Seventh-day Adventists all over the place. Why I say that? Because I drive the, the, the Troopy, the four-wheel drive Toyota. I drive it. And it's got Carolundi picture on the side of it. I go to remote community that I've been told that they will rob cars if you leave it open. And I will park the troopy. Me and Islander, I forget about some stuff. Uh, I think um, I'm getting too old. But I will park the troopy. And when I come there, everything in the troopy is still there. I asked some of the leaders and elders in the community, and they said, well, it's a Carolundi truck. Nobody touches a Carolundi car. Nobody touched because you can see the ministry that they have done. Was church when I grew up warm? Yes, when mum and dad passed away, as I said before. Was it cool and warm after that? No. I start walking out of the church because not only it wasn't accommodating my need as an adolescent, as a teenager, I actually didn't like my uncles and aunties. They were very mean at me. Very conservative church. Same. Samoan Seventh-day Adventists are very conservative, and I can say that clearly it, it, through the online and for you guys this morning, it is true. Some of you may have pastor or teach at the Samoan community. It's very conservative. You're not allowed to move in your seat. Hey, sit still, okay? Hey, sit still, okay? Can I go to the bathroom? No, wait until church finish. It, it, it's like that. It's like, it's like uh, I grew up in. I, I thought, well, wait, wait, I'm going to get out of here. So I joined some of the groups that were in our areas, and I start leaving the church. The next thing I know, I got expelled from the high school that I went to at Mangri because I hit a teacher in the head with a guitar. Sorry, yeah. uh, and that's true. Uh, I was given a green form, and I wasn't allowed to leave uh, to go to any other government school in New Zealand. I was 14 years old. I didn't know where to go. And then my brother saw some kids who were walking on the road and they had uniforms on. And they asked them where they're from and they said, oh, we'll go to De La Salle College. You get it? I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, born, bred Seventh-day Adventist. There's 16 of us born, bred Seventh-day Adventists. And now we're going to a De La Salle College. My sister who passed away, my late sister Grace, when... And I asked part of Brother Pat if he could accept me to school and said, I just arrived from the island. When I answer some of the questions to the principal, he goes, are oh, you the first islander that comes in? You can speak English very well. I thought, oops. <laughs> oops. But De La Salle changed my life because it was De La Salle when I was playing first 15 for the school as well as trialing for the New Zealand, which I made the New Zealand first 15, I met Grant's mum. Circumstances, I've never, I've never had any ideas about girls then. I wanted to make my career. Every child that's born in New Zealand, you have to make the All Blacks. There, there's no question about it. You've got to be an All Black. Either you could be an All Black or go to school and stay in school until you get a good job from your graduation in school. So I wanted this side because I wasn't that intelligent like my sisters and brothers. I was, I, I was more physical. So I wanted to be the old black. 
And I was there before the late Vainga Tungamala, who just passed away a few weeks ago. Um, I remember Vainga, and I sent my condolences to his wife, Daphne. Uh, and I, yeah, I've connected with these boys. And they always said, you old blacks that never made it. I said, yeah, but I'm going to make it to heaven too. Are you going to make it to heaven? <laughs> These are the tea things we say when we have, when I go to New Zealand, we have a couple with them. David Tour was younger than us, uh, the, the good heavyweight boxing from New Zealand. But was it warm? Was it building a lot of relationship with me? No, no, I left the church. I left the church and I played my game and I thought I'm, that was it. But when I met Grant's mum and Grant came into my life, I have to make a choice whether I'm going to stay and make the All Blacks or I'm going to raise this child. And I choose to raise the child. I choose to raise the child. And one of the key why I made the choice to come here to your beautiful church to worship, and I hope you don't mind me coming here worshiping, is because I wanted to share the warmth relationship with Tiamina in church, doing church with her here. I know it's a bit of a trick coming all the way from Morrisett Park to here, but I wanted to spend that time with Tiamina. Was Jesus cool? Yeah, Jesus was cool. Was warm part of his ministry? Oh, 100% plus. Why would you say that, Rob? Because I know, I read the scriptures. You read the scriptures and you'll find it, that you'll find in the book of the gospel that you'll find Jesus was a cool man. Some people didn't like him, and you'll find it in the chorus of my song that I wrote. There were people gathering there, some were happy, some were crying, as the Son of God bled there and died. Some were happy that this guy, whom they call the lunatic, is passing away. They, they, they're going to they're get rid of him. The Pharisee and those who were leaders of that time, they're going to get rid of him. So they were happy. But there were people there, there was only a small handful of people that were knelting in front of his cross and crying, knowing that their hope is gone. But they forgot who he really is. They forgot that he was the I am. They forgot that Jesus Christ was cool. Church can be cool too. Church can be a wonderful place to be for our kids. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's hard. But I know church can be cool. I know I made my errors in my journey. But when I came back to God and recommitted myself in 1987, got repaptized, I've never turned a foot away from God. I had so much opportunity in New Zealand to become a big CEO positions, but I turned my foot and said, if you don't allow me to not to work on Sabbath, I can't work for you. Graham will tell you his own journey, but I'm telling you my journey regarding warm is the new cool. How do we fuel relationship? We need to accommodate what we can in the common denominator, and that is Jesus Christ. We need to accommodate each other. We need to care for each other. Hey, young people want authenticity. They don't want people to just come and preach up in front like me and then fake the whole thing after that. They want people to come to their home, sit with them. Whether they're playing PlayStation, go for it. Sit down and play PlayStation with them, even though you will lose the game. <laughs> I've got a 31-year-old uh, son, and you've seen him. I think he came here a few times. He's taller than Grant, uh, Charlie, with L-E-Y at the end. And Charlie played PlayStation. And Grant said to me, Dad, why don't you go into his room and play PlayStation? I said, you know why I don't want to go to his room and play PlayStation? He goes, why, Dad? Because I don't want to get wasted. Oh, Dad, you lower your eagle and go and play PlayStation with your son. So I went and I said, son, can you show me how to play the game? So they showed me on the console. I said, okay, so what are you playing? So called, say the name and they would play. As I was close to losing, I actually reset the game. And Grant goes, why did you do that? I said, oh, because I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I said, Dad, just come on, Dad. Raising two boys was hard. 
my daughter ended up moving to New Zealand and, and lived with her mom because her mom needed help. Um, and I became a grandfather before I was 40 years old. So some of you have said I'm my grand's brother. Oh, what a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. What a privilege. No, I'm grand's dad. I had grand before I turned 18. Um, and I raised him. I choose grand and the life that he was going to give me over rugby. And I wish, you know. I don't have any regrets, I wish. Because the boys, Michael Jones, Vainga Twingamala, and, and all the other boys said to me, oh, we wish. I said, no, it's all right. As long as I know that I was the fastest when we raced in Mount Smart Stadium in the 100 meters school athletics tournament, I, I, will, I, will, I will live with that record. You guys can play and earn all your money in rugby, but I'll live with that record that I beat all of you guys in the 100 meters at Mount Smart Sports Stadium. So that's a cool one. So how do we make church warm and cool? Well, Jesus did it. Jesus did it. He accepted people. He accepted people. You, you think when the, when the disciple wanted to push away the kids that, that they were flooding around Jesus, just say, hey, 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 let them come to me. You move aside. Let them come to me. Leave the kids alone. Let them come to me. And you'll find it in Matthew chapter 15 when Jesus was actually fed up with church. I'm sorry I say that. It's true. Well, you know, the middle, in, in the Holy Land, actually is where the church things is happening. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and all the people that actually go to church. He was fed up with it. So he goes, come on, boys, let's go. He said to the disciple, come on, boys and girls, let's go. And they went out to the region, to the border of the region of Phoenicians and, Israel, and, and the Jewish nations and Judea. He wasn't allowed to be there. He was a popular guy, but he wasn't allowed to be there. He went there. And you'll find in Matthew chapter 15 that a woman came seeking his help. This lady struggled all her life to find someone to fix her daughter. She was possessed by demons. And she came begging. And you'll find it's the only time you'll find that God was silent in the Bible. Because when she begged, oh Jesus Son of David, she actually gave him the authority of who he is. He was Jesus, the Savior, the Son of God sent to this earth. He was a son of David, monarch. Get it? Kingship. And she said, oh, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus kept walking. Wow. Unusual for Jesus. But that's how Jesus kept the community and fuel the, fuel the warm relationship within each other. There's no other preacher that went outside until after Jesus. She begged Jesus three times. And sometimes it hurts my heart when I read that story in Matthew chapter 15. When Jesus answers his disciples and says, Something I don't want to mention. But you read it in Matthew chapter 15. But she said, even the crumbs that fall off the table of the master, please have mercy on me. Jesus kept families, warm relationship because he accepted people. Jesus cared for people. Jesus was very welcoming people. I mean, you look at the disciples, you got Peter. Peter, well, you all know who Peter is. I'm a Peter. You can't be a Peter. There may be Peter in this congregation. There may be Judah Iscariot in this congregation. That's the truth. There's no lie about it. We can't keep the mask on. I remember a song written by Bill Kather that was sung by Mark Lowey, and I really admire that song. It's called Make It Real. And one of the lyrics of that song says, down here there's a mask that cover every face, but your sweet face is the one I love the most. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not here you know, like Dr. Frifty says to me, are you going to come to correct our theology? I said, no, I need my theology corrected sometimes. So if you think my theology is wrong, I'm not preaching heretics, I'm preaching from the scriptures of God. Tell me about it. But Jesus here, he moved the mountains. He moved the barrier that was actually dividing those 
who they call heathen in his time and those who go to church. And because of that tradition, believe me, you look at it, the Christianity history, it's like that throughout, even until our days. We are dividing with those who are out there. We are in here. Those who are out there. No, 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 no. Everyone. You know, I, I like paraphrasing it at Lakeside. Uh, John 3.16. I'm going to finish with that. Am I taking too long? Or? No, I normally preach about three hours. <laughs> Is that okay? I say that to, to the Lakeside Church. I have my medication at 12 o'clock, so I preach until 12 o'clock. Is that fine? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, I do have medication sometimes. I, I was suffering from severe psoriasis. Uh, very bad, seriously. Uh, you see my body? I like my olive skin. I, I can wear shorts and I can wear singlet today. But I know Dr. Thrifty, I visited her, her um, surgery when he, she was at Kurenbong uh, to ask for help on that. It was bad. Today I stand because of his amazing grace. Jesus accepted people. Jesus cared for people. Jesus loved people. Jesus welcomed people. And I, every time Grant asked me a question about religion, I said, go to the gospel. If you find it in Jesus, you won't go wrong with your ministry. Because Jesus, in Hebrews chapter 12, he is the author and the perfecter of your faith and my faith. There's no way we can go beyond that. Jesus and Jesus alone. You know the song says, I will be still and know that you are God. There are times in our journey that difficulties come and I know we have gone through a lot. We've gone through a lot. I know my nieces were threatening by the flood, flood water up in Queensland and I was constantly in prayers. Where I live with the boys, my uh, son and my nephew, uh, AJ, uh, there's a uh, stormwater drain at the back. And I was worried when they were sending out signal about the Dora Creek River. I mean the Dora Creek catchment, whatever you call it. And I thought, mm, I wonder if I can go for a swim in that stormwater drain. I said to Rachel, I should open it up and gr- climb down and have a look. She goes, no! Uh, sometimes I got a little bit of cheekiness in me uh, being the youngest in the family. But does Jesus care? Yes, he cares. Does Jesus love you? Yes, he loves you. Does Jesus form warm relationship? How do we build it? Practice Jesus style. When WW, was it, what, what will Jesus do? Is that WWJD? Is that right? Came out, I think, in the early 2000s. We, we, we were fanatic about it. We were saying to people, what will Jesus do? Can we say that now in 2022? Yes, please. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. I've heard so many people in the street of South Auckland. I'm far from it. But Jesus found me in that street and changed my life. And when he changed my life, I have vowed never to turn back. Uh, There's a song that was sung by the heritage singers, I'll never go back. I'll never go back. Um... I know it's not in the bulletin, but can I sing a song before I sit down? Is that all right? I didn't play the guitar for over 10 years. I was a heavy metalist. Um, I can play the guitar with my teeth and play it at the back of my head. Uh, and that's the truth. Um, when I left the church, I was, I was into the music world. And, but it took a while for me to pick up the guitar again. Or just to make sure that Grant can play the guitar. And he does. He plays it better than I do. Um, I wrote the song at the valley of making that choice whether I choose Grant and raise a child or choose rugby. And so this is the song I wrote. And I hope you don't mind the second verse. is Simon um, verse. So you guys got to learn Simon today and ask the Holy Spirit to translate it into your heart. I'm sitting by the river Throwing papers in the water And papers are the pages 
of my life As I sit there and I wonder How my life is like a shadow That fade away in the midst of the night I have no friends to turn to No one to love me And I wonder what I'll do in this life Then I felt your arms around me So gentle and so softly As you whisper to me that night you say, son, I love you and I will care for you. I've never felt that special before. Through all my life, I've always been blind. And now I finally see. Lo uo langa uo toe a mata Le fea ngainga sa matala I le sua male male le anga O le anga sala Sa fa pea o le sa o la valea I will lilo I lo valea I will live on a etu ma fatali po o a fea Lo u ali i lo u faola Fa fe tai mo lo u lo fa Ua o i lo ai o te le toe lo fo po lo la Sa o loto mai lele ama Fuli tua i a ua nga sala To e faa fole ta fea ngai nga Sa o ta tala You say, son, I love you and I will care for you I've never felt that special before Through all my life I've always been blinded And now I finally see the light Let's pray. Father God, I come before you thanking you, Lord, for your help and thank you, Lord, for speaking through, through me to us. Pray, Father Lord, that we become a church that build a warm relationship not only within ourselves, in our families, but within this church and also become the light bearer, the feet and the hands of you in our surrounding community. Thank you so much for your love. In Jesus' name, amen.